Hi, I'm the next speaker. Uh, like I said, we've been talking, I've been learning a lot. Is an old Catholic priest. All right, y'all, please give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up for Reverend Barry Moses. Brother said I am an old Catholic priest. Please don't hold it against me. Um, I was ordained in 2008. I've been in ministry in total 15 years. This is a long time. Yeah, my face doesn't show, but my knees do. But anyway, um, this story and these stories are so invaluable. And I gotta tell you this: me and Jesus, we got a good relationship. I make plans and he tears them down. So in 1998, I came out as a lesbian. Yes, I know, shocker, right? Came out as a lesbian. My mother had died in 1995, and I started doing a lot of spiritual work, and I discovered this part of myself. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to live my truth. And I came out. I had a big 25th birthday party. Oh, my God. Some of the most gorgeous boys in Brooklyn was there. Did I tell you I used to run with a pack of gorgeous Brooklyn gay boys. These boys were so fabulous when we would go to the club, people would buy me drinks to talk to them. It was a win-win situation. <laughs> so that was nice. But it was one thing, I always wanted to be part of the guys, but I was just like Guy and Jason. And I, I, what, I, I did what I had to do when I would dress up in my Tims and my Carhartts. I know I'm dating myself. Some of y'all know what Carhartt is. And Tims, y'all know what that is too. And then they would try to put me in dresses. And it was cute for a hot minute, but I always felt uncomfortable. So again, like I said, I was doing uh, my spiritual work and I prayed to God, please, uh, God, please, I just want to be in alignment. So as it happens, I had a friend who was going to University of Maryland Social Work School, shout out to University of Maryland Social Work School. It's, the bills are high, but it's worth it. It's worth it. And so he said, I'm doing a social work internship. You mind being one of my clients? I was like, sure, free therapy. And then I had to fight with myself, right? Because I grew up in an era where, guess what? Black people didn't go to therapy. We went to Jesus. <laughs> but I got tired of being sick and tired. A half a pint of, of gin a day and messed up relationships, that's no way to live a life. So I said, all right, I'll try. In my first session, he sat me down, got me a glass of water, we talking. And he said, you know what, I want to work with you over the next couple months, you know. Blah, blah, blah. I said, yes, blah. <laughs> I think you're trans transgender. I said, what? You think I'm what? I think you're transgender. When I tell you I called him everything but a child of God, I might have lost my license right there in the public urban. It was terrible. But he was understanding and patient, and so I went through a period of being gender non-conforming. But I had always been gender non-conforming. I mean, in the late 80s and early 90s, my father would come to me like, where's my jacket? Yeah, my jacket. Where's the tie that I had? I just bought, you got it? That was my father. I was still as clothes. You know, it was the time of TLC, so I could get away with some stuff. Now, all of them, I got away with some of the stuff. And so, in the gender transition, I'm still praying to be in alignment. I, I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm just going to flow through it. And so I found myself, again, I'm a praying man. I found myself in a spiritualist church. Uh, this is the type of church where the saints meet the Orisha, right? So I'm sitting in the back and I'm chilling. And there's a medium going around reading everybody's life and telling all their business, right? And this particular medium was fierce. Let's call it Miguelito. Miguelito was fierce. He would put you on front street. So here I am in the corner. I'm all the way back in the corner like, you never me. Don't you know he strolled right up? And he said, ha ha! You can't be both. You have to pick whether be a boy or girl. You can't be both. And it ran off. Oh my God, he put me on front street. I felt so naked. <laughs> And I had an hour and a half drive back with my godmother to, uh, from Havington to Baltimore. So that was an interesting conversation. 
did a lot of evasive things. But I decided, you know what, maybe Miguelito was on to something. So in 2014, I decided, you know what, I'm going to try this thing out. I'm going to take testosterone for 90 days. And if I don't like it, then I'll just start taking it. No harm, no foul. I'll go back to living my regular old weirdo life. So, as I'm going through this process, I started feeling good. I'm 40 years old, but I feel like I'm 19. This thing got some legs to it now. And while I'm in this space, I started reflecting in my prayer. And I remember a time, circa 1982, 1983, I was either eight or nine years old. And I'm sitting with my mother watching Donahue. And again, I date myself. Donnie Hugh was Oprah before Oprah, and then Oprah chased his ass off there. That's so I saw the first ever chance person I saw was on Donnie Hugh. So I'm looking, and this person is talking, and something in me connected with that person. I didn't have words. See, a lot of this terminology that we have now that the young people use, we didn't have that back then. It was there was no words for it. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow. And I said to my mother, I said, mommy, you ever want to be a man? <laughs> she looked at me and she said, hell no, I never want to be no rusty ass man. <laughs> and so that was the end of that. That shut me down for a long time. That's why it took me to the age of 40 to make my transition. But this is the thing too, because most of the time when you do transition, you do have to undergo some therapy. I'm gonna tell y'all this. They need to put some type of one label on these therapies. Caution, you will not know everything or learn everything in therapies. There's just some shit we won't tell you. There's shit they won't tell you. And guess what they didn't tell me? About orientation expansion. So it's, 19, it's 2017. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling 19. But then I noticed these boys around me started looking like snacks. Good snacks, extra plenty of healthy snacks. And I said, well, what the hell is going on? I didn't sign up to be a man, to be a faggy. Really? Really, Jesus? And he was like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I got you now. And I said, you know what, God? You said the truth was set me free. What is this about? And what he put on my heart was the truth that you thought you were is not what you thought. The truth that I know you are, I'm putting in you. I am, so you are. And so through this space and through this time, I've been able to cultivate a level of self-acceptance. But you know what? There's always more, and so I remain optimistic.